Hey guys, it's Runchix from Love the Spot. In this episode of our weekly Twitch show, we discuss how we got into poker, give our views on transitioning from poker to a conventional career, and dig into the value of working with other people. This time I'm publishing a condensed version of the highlights, so please let me know what you think about this format in the comment section below, and enjoy! So Toby, when did you first realize that you can actually make money playing poker? You know, I saw that pretty early when I was 17. I think I talked about it before. So it wasn't even legal. But uh, yeah, I started with free $50 and then I worked my way up. And I found out pretty early, I guess. You know, obviously I worked my way up. So, you know, I played micro stakes. But uh, even then, you know, when you're... 17 and a student and you don't really have money coming in then you know even making 200 bucks a month is, is great for you so yeah basically i uh, realized that right from the get-go what did your family think about it oh they, they were against it actually it's it's funny because they thought it's you know just a stupid video game or whatever and it's it's not real money and that was one of my proudest moments when the first check was uh, sent to me and I could uh, put it on a table and, you know, show the world that it's real money and I'm not just wasting my time. <laughs> what was the look in their faces? I mean, they, they were surprised. I can't really say they were happy because then, of course, I, I uh, did even more, I, play, I played even more. But yeah, it's, it's so funny because it wasn't even that much money, you know, it was like an $80 check or something, but uh, it just showed me that it was real. And uh, I could uh, also show to others that it's real money and I'm not just wasting my time. And it's, it was one of my favorite moments in my career, I, I think. How did you start? I started, well, I had a job, a proper job, and I, I started playing poker for fun. Just a friend of mine loved poker and he you know, said, hey, come over to a casino with me. So I did. We played some poker and I was like, yeah, okay, let's let's try online. And then I basically, you know, wasted a lot of evenings just playing free rolls and whatnot. And then I bought the Harrington book, you know, the tournament strategy, whatever thing. Oh, yes. The, those were great books back in the days. Amazing books. I, I read both of those books. I won a bunch of tournaments real quick. I was like, yeah, I'm the man. <laughs> you know, I was still I was still obviously working, you know, so I didn't care about that that money that much. Even though, you know, some of the some of the prize monies were pretty good. But then I discovered cash games and you know what? I was losing all the time. And it pissed me off so bad because I was like, How the hell? I'm I'm winning in these tournaments and now I'm losing all the time in cash games. So it sort of, you know, triggered me to improve. I stopped playing tournaments altogether, which was like ridiculous idea of, you know, you quit winning tournaments just to keep losing on cash <laughs> games. So because yeah. you, you have a point to prove to yourself or something. <laughs> yeah. So a bit weird, but yeah, basically that's how I started and then got really interested in, in the game and uh, kept on going. And how old were you back then? Well, I don't remember. It must have been like 24, something like that. Wow, so that's, that's quite old. Yeah, yeah, maybe 23. Still, quite old for a poker player, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's funny to think about because for me it was quite easy, you know. I was a student and then, you know, I went to university. And so it was, I, don't, I, I didn't really have a job, you know. So I could just play poker all the time. But I guess when you have a job, then it's, it's just harder. And, you know, the, the transition from, uh, you know, being from uh, having a real job to uh, becoming a poker player, I think that's that's not an easy decision. Oh, yeah, that was that was a tough decision for sure. I had a pretty good career. I started getting a lot of job offers because I, I quit the company that I was working for. I wanted to do nothing for a while because I was working super hard, no holidays for like a few years. So yeah, I, I wanted to do nothing and then I started getting a lot of job offers and I was playing poker for fun. And at one point I realized, you know what, this can actually be a job. So it was, you know, the trickiest part was when I decided I'm going to play poker, I knew that there's no way back. 
Like I, I won't be able to, let's say, play poker for a year and then go back and get the same level of a job that I could get back then, because it would be basically a one-way street. I, I get that, but do you think that's really true? I feel like some poker players also get really good jobs even after their career. I think you just have to prove that uh, you know you didn't waste your time, that you know what you did earned you a lot of money, and you know that you were at a high level. Yeah, you see, it's easier to say that now. Back then, it was a bit different. You know, poker wasn't understood very very well. It still isn't. And also, like, sure, you can still land a decent job, but uh, it's not because of your CV. Maybe because of, you know, through through some acquaintances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it doesn't look great on a CV that you basically had, like, a couple years sabbatical. It doesn't matter if you were making money or not. You, you weren't working in the industry where you were applying to, right? Yeah, true. And, I mean, at the, at the time I started, I also was uh, thinking about the same things. So, I mean, even now, I, I'm not even sure if that's true, if you really can find a good job after your poker career. I guess you can, but uh, it's going to be harder, I think. Right. Well, the thing so is, because if you think about it, a career in any, any sort of conventional career, right, you would be working in a field, continually educating yourself in that field, if you're doing anything meaningful, not like flipping burgers, right? But... Uh, Let's say you're a software engineer or, or let's say you're a marketing expert, right? You'd be working, you would be gaining experience. So you start young, you maybe start as a student, you work shit jobs, eventually you move up and then you're older and you get your nice little office and you're a little boss man and life is good. For a poker player, you know, say somebody who played poker for a number of years and then they're like, 27 years old and then they want to enter the job market it really sucks to start at the bottom but nobody's gonna hire you to the top yeah i think there's a couple of points um i think you know the the whole job uh landscape has changed a lot it has shifted so there's so nobody works at the same job for 50 years anymore i feel like i mean you know even my dad he started as a as an electrician and then he got a job you know in, in middle management somewhere else and then he had to change the job again i mean it's it feels like it feels like it's not the same anymore you know but maybe i'm wrong i mean <laughs> i don't know a lot about you know the, the job landscape out there i never had a, a real job um, Right, but also, because yeah, you know, Toby, I think one thing that we must not forget is it's easier for a successful poker player to think about getting a job than for somebody who failed, right? Because as a successful poker player, you're most likely looking for a job as a new challenge. You're not forced to, to basically survive, right? So you can look for a job, try to find a new career, find a new challenge. Eventually, you can even open up your own business, etc., etc. And it's much easier to explain to somebody what you did if you were successful at it. If you can say like, well, you know what? I played poker. That was my thing. Here are the results. But for some of the people who went into this, in the, into this career, invested like five years of their life, never really achieved anything, like pretty much struggled to pay the bills throughout... And then they have to find a job. It's a super tricky spot. You know, I don't envy these people. And in fact, some of my friends were in this situation and it's a really shitty situation to be in. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. You know, I just uh, thought about the other examples. For example, Vanessa Selbst, I think she works for one of the biggest um, hedge funds uh, right now. Or, you know, at least that's uh, what I heard like three years ago. And I think if I remember co correctly, also Fedor had some uh, opportunities uh, there. But yeah, maybe it's just a little bias because it's just the great players. And all the other players who struggle, they can't really find a good job afterwards. Right. And also, like if you think about people like Fedor or Stefan or many of those big names, right, who, who made a name for themselves in the poker industry, 
that's already something valuable. Like their name alone, their experience, they can be working as speakers for different. Like a good example here is this. What what was her name? Liv Bo- Bori. What what's the right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's super interesting. You know, she went from a poker player to whatever she is now, like a, a TV presenter journalist science advocate i don't even know how to describe it but she's doing something that she really likes to do which has nothing to do with poker or or anything but uh poker enabled her to do it actually because she built her name she she built her public presence and she's using it but i think she also had a degree before right yeah yeah of course she had a degree before but it's you know we're not even talking about degrees because clearly you know if you don't have proper education in whatever field you want to work in it doesn't matter if you made like i don't know a hundred million playing poker if you're not a scientist you're not going to work in science unless you want to buy a science firm or something yeah yeah i guess uh, micro testing is just super important if you want to make the transition if, if you want to turn pro but when did you actually realize that you're good at it um you know that's the point for me. It was easy because it was so, so uh, gradually, you know. I I was playing when I was uh, while I was a student, and then I went to university and I kept playing. There was no real moment, you know. It's just I went up in stakes while I was uh, doing something else, and then you know, at one point I made more money playing poker than uh, I would have made when I, uh, which is you know, would have just taken a real job. So then I thought, okay, no, screw the university, let's just play poker. Yeah, th- th- there was not one moment, you know, it was always like a gradual process. Like I was always improving, always trying to climb up the ladder. I struggled maybe the first couple of months, but after that, uh, it, it went well. Back in the days, it was easier, obviously, because you know, there was the big boom and there was 11 years ago. And also I had a, like my big advantage was that I had a lot of time at my hands, you know, because I, I didn't have a job. I, like all I did was playing poker and study poker and improving. Yeah, that, that was super valuable back in the days. I mean, even a brief up shot for a Nordic Holden was almost enough to uh, beat the games. Because you basically have information that nobody else has, even though it's ridiculous to think about it now. Yeah. So, Toby, throughout the years, what do you think, what was the biggest moment that helped you in your career? What, what was, like, the big catalyst which kind of pushed you forward the most? I think it was, you know, knowing the right people. Because, as I mentioned before, you know, I moved to another big city in uh, Germany um, in order to study there. And then uh, I met a lot of uh, other great poker players who helped me tremendously. I think that was a big part because back in the days at home, I was just, as you mentioned before, reading Harrington and watching videos, but it's, it's not the same, you know. I was just doing it by myself. I mean, when you meet the right people and you can uh, kind of work together, that's just, that makes it way easier. What's the biggest benefit there for you? I think sometimes it's getting new ideas. Like sometimes you don't know what you don't know and then you don't think about it. And then, you know, new input can help you. And also, even if you watch videos, it's it's not the same because not everybody shares everything with everybody. So sometimes you only get the real information when you have good friends you you can work work with or a good coach or whatever but more on a personal level and not in a video or something i completely agree with with that assessment i think you know especially what you mentioned about you don't know what you don't know just by watching videos you're not gonna all of a sudden find out what you don't know especially nowadays because you know, I remember back in the day, like say eight years ago or something, you could watch a video that Sauce made or Phil Galphon made and you would be like, wow, I never thought about these things before. Then it kind of changes your whole approach to the game and you realize, wow, there's so much more to it. But nowadays when there's already so much information about the game out there, I think it's hard to find material that really blows your mind 
at least I think so. I mean, I don't know how it is for people who are still just starting out. And it's not only about a theoretical standpoint. It's also about, let me give you an example. You know, if there's a really good PLO game on iPoker or whatever, nobody is going to tell you on, on YouTube, hey, you got to play this game. It's so good, a lot of fish. It's super soft. I mean, that's not going to happen. So the, the best rakeback deals or the best whatever. I mean, there's just a lot. And we always talk about how how much more there is to poker than just playing and uh, making decisions in the hands. All the other decisions that you make, like game selection and everything related to, to the business here, so hugely important. Having people who can advise you on these things, it's really, really va- valuable. Yeah, and I also feel like it's getting more and more complex. So, I mean, even if you know a guy who knows a lot of about uh, solvers or VMs, I mean, that's super helpful. Yeah, it, it's not only about the game itself. Hey, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, you might be interested to watch some other videos on my channel. We've got some live play videos, some hand analysis, and long form podcast interviews. You can find some of the links in the description below.